How you doing, everybody? Today, we're going to take a quick look at Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. This is the latest movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, directed by Sam Raimi and starring Benedict Cumberbatch, Elizabeth Olsen, and Xochitl Gomez. And I hope my pronunciation of her name was at least close. The sorcerer one day encounters young America Chavez, a girl who claims to be from another universe. And she is being hunted by demons, which is rarely a good sign. And in order to figure out what in the hell is going on and how to stop these demons, Strange enlists the help of some old friends, including Sorcerer Supreme Wong and Wanda Maximoff. And as you might expect from a Doctor Strange movie, shit gets weird. So good to see Raimi doing a superhero movie again. I mean, the MCU is all about fun and spectacle, and that's pretty much Raimi in a nutshell. And if you're familiar with his work, I don't think there's a lot in this movie that will surprise you. It does have some very funny moments, including an excellent Bruce Campbell cameo, because it's a Sam Raimi movie, of course there's gonna be a Bruce Campbell cameo. Some really cool and inventive visual effects, which one would expect from a Doctor Strange movie. And the action sequences are a lot of fun, and some of them may be pushing the boundaries of PG-13. There's nothing especially gory or anything, except maybe for the fight at the beginning of the movie with a big CGI monster. For the most part, any especially brutal violence is more implied rather than shown. But there is a lot of violence and so much death. Not quite Infinity War levels or anything like that, but still, it's a lot. And that's the thing, when you're bouncing around between universes, pretty much everyone is expendable. Doesn't matter if that character dies, it's not canon. I have yet to see Cumberbatch turn in a bad performance, and that has not changed in Multiverse of Madness. Strange is in an interesting position here, as unlike a lot of superheroes, he's not really hiding behind a secret identity. Everyone knows who he is. He's basically in the spotlight 24-7, which can lead to some awkward situations, and indeed does very early on in the movie. And Cumberbatch has some extra work to do this time around, as he has to play several versions of Doctor Strange as he travels the multiverse, and he is more than up to the task. And as he meets different versions of himself, Strange often has to do some brutal self-reflection, which is never an easy task, though often a necessary one. Gomez has now joined the MCU as America Chavez, and I liked her. Chavez is an interesting character, and Gomez is very good in this role. She is very much a child, still trying to figure out how her superpowers work and gaining the confidence to use them, but at the same time, she has also had to do a lot of growing up in a very short amount of time, partly due to all these demonic creatures that keep trying to have her for lunch, and also because of some tragic stuff that has happened in her past. I won't spoil it all here, but she has been through some shit. And speaking of people who have been through some shit, Wanda Maximoff is back, and I do believe this is the first time they have referred to her as the Scarlet Witch. I don't know if there was a creative reason behind that, or perhaps a legal reason, maybe that's more likely, but... In any case, Scarlet Witch. And after the events of WandaVision, which you should really check out if you haven't, she was kind of a mess, and very much still is. And Olsen does a really good job in this movie of bringing Wanda's trauma to life. It feels very genuine and at times legitimately scary. And ultimately, Wanda just wants to be a mom again, which is very hard to do because her boys never actually existed. In this universe... But it turns out there are a lot of other Earths out there, so maybe she can find her kids somewhere else. Wanda in this movie kind of reminds me of Killmonger a bit, in that you don't always agree with her actions and her methods, but damn it, she has a point. There's a really good line in the movie, I think it was in one of the trailers as well, where Wanda says to Strange, you break the rules and you're the hero, I break the rules and I'm the villain. And you know she's not wrong. And in a way, Strange can sympathize with her, as he's kind of a mess himself, he just hides it better. It didn't work out with him and Dr. Palmer in this universe, but again, whole bunch of universes out there, maybe. And because there's a lot of bouncing around between universes, oh, we have so many cameos. Not just Bruce Campbell. Seems like they took a bit of inspiration from What If, which, unlike WandaVision, I don't really recommend, because most of it wasn't that good. But it had its moments. I won't mention every cameo because I don't want to give too much away, but I don't think it's a spoiler at this point to say Patrick Stewart shows up as Charles Xavier. I mean, his voice was in the trailer. We all know he's in there. And I did like what Danny Elfman did with the score when he shows up just a little bit of the X-Men animated series from the 90s plays. That was a nice touch. 
Sean's inner child was very happy about that, so thank you, Mr. Elfman. Overall, this is pretty much what I wanted from a Sam Raimi superhero movie, and I left the theater happy. And if you like what the MCU has done with Doctor Strange so far, I do not think you will be disappointed. And I do hope we get to see more of America Chavez in the future. Before I wrap it up, there are two bonus scenes in the credits, so don't leave right away when they start rolling. It's amazing how I still see people doing that. The mid credit scene has some interesting implications for Strange's future, and the end credit scene kind of reminds me of that bit with Captain America at the end of Spider-Man Homecoming. Not necessary for the story or anything, but it was fun. And that's all I have to say about Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Till next time, take care.